Hi, y'all. So um, I'm going to do the second, um, give you a little bit of a glimpse into the second book of my Heroes of the Line series. It's called Return of the Line. Oh, oh there it is. And um, let me do that. There we go. Okay, right, sorry. Uh, anyway, so I've got my handy dandy magnifying glass again today with the uh, light on it. And I want to read to you again uh, a little excerpt from it. Um, and I hope that you like it. And I hope to hear from you down in the uh, down below. Um, th this book takes place four years after the first book. Uh, they're not really sure yet uh, about this war that's coming, but uh, they're waiting for it and they've been training for it. And they didn't realize it, but um, for the pages in this book, it actually started a month ago when a shade tried to snatch Frankie but got Nick instead. So. Uh, one of my favorite passages, I'm going to give you uh, two passages. This one is actually pretty short, and uh, it is one of my faves, um, just because there's a Jonathan Livingston Seagull reference to it. So uh, let me find that, and uh, we'll go on to that, and then I will read the uh, other most um, kind of chilling passage. So hang tight. So the setup for the first uh, blurb, or the, the, the first little uh, clip, is um, we and Ryan have been um, disappeared, and the boys are going out to look for them. But um, Nick has an idea, and he wants to find a way to capture a shade eventually and find out what their plans are. So they're on the road, and um, Harry is taking them to uh, get some uh, filters for light filters. So uh, let me see here. Hmm. I think we stand a better chance of getting everyone out of there alive if it's more concerned about its own existence than erasing us. We just don't trap it this time, at least not with quicklime. Nick looked over the back seat into the chest where Harry stored the tools of their particular trade. What are you thinking? Frank asked as Harry returned, tossing a bag into the back seat. I got UV, red, blue, yellow, green, and black light. It was all they had. It's a good start. Thanks, Harry. Nick smiled, motioning to the trunk. Uh, break out the flashlight, he instructed, opening the packets one by one, pulling a single plastic filter from each one of them, slipping them all into one sleeve, and handing them to his little brother. You got the duty. You're going to use those filters one by one. Just hold it up in front of the beam and shine it on any shade that comes near, but not the vestige. I flip my page here. So. What if it doesn't work? Harry asked, pulling easily back out onto the highway. You're going to be manning the flamethrower. Jeez, Nick, we could set the whole forest on fire. You won't. If that vestige is there, it needs to be distracted enough for us to get we and Ryan out of there so that we can run like the devil. And how the hell are we going to get that, keep that thing from chasing us all down? Harry asked, frowning. I'm going to hold it, Nick answered. Harry's head whipped around and the car fishtailed faintly in the lane. What? Nick, you can't stop those things. You saw what happened. It almost killed you. He shook his head violently. You're not getting near that thing, boy. I don't care if I got a... I didn't know who I was in that line, or what I could do, or why I could do what I could. There was no one to teach either of us anything. You changed that. You, what you did, made me stronger here than I ever was before. Nick said softly, his gaze out the window, watching the world go by, wondering how similar he might be to a particular seagull named Jonathan Livingston, who achieved what so many others said was impossible. So that's the first, um, snippet and uh, I do have a particular penchant for um, sorry I, I'm sorry um, for the book Jonathan Livingston Seagull it was uh, very um, very influential to me when I was younger so the next little blurb is um, some memories from while Nick was their captive uh, in the shade realm let me see here, where was it? 
On the dais, a tall, lanky man, beaten near to death and shackled tightly, was dragged forward by two shades. Nick felt the guard's hatred rage again, even as he remembered this moment and meeting the man's eerily familiar blue eyes from across the chamber as if he'd known Nick was there. His long, dark hair clung... Yeah, sorry. His long, dark hair hung, knotted and filthy over his face. But even from this distance, Nick remembered how fine the structure of the face was. Lean, angular, and in a masculine way, beautiful, as if the man himself knew a great secret that no torment or torture could ever strip from him. The guard slammed its hands into Nick's shoulders and leaned down to his ear. The fate of the traitor, he hissed, then bit deep into the flesh of the boy's ear, feeling delight as Nick screamed and fought back. In that moment of living the guard's memory, Nick realized something he hadn't understood before. They hated him, and everyone like him. They hated the humans that walked the world, but more importantly, they were afraid of many of them, and for some reason, especially Nick. It was the same level of fear they held for the lanky man by the fire. The one paced back and forth, a small stone in his hand that seemed to glow when he held it toward the other captive. I remember this. How did I forget this? Nick wondered as the one moved closer. Its voice rose in pitch, and though it spoke no words, a gentle breeze stirred and the stone in its hand began to glow, filling with light stolen from the dying man. When the stone became dangerously bright, the Master Shade's right-hand ghoul stepped away from the captive who gasped, struggling for breath. It held up the stone. The very life of those who stole our birthright shall be the source of our long-awaited victory. That which they hold so dear will be the end of them all and the birth of a new age for us, the one promised to a sudden cacophony of cheers that sent chills through Nick. It turned, casting its impassive gaze on the young boy who couldn't help but think, I think I wish I didn't understand what he was saying again. A malicious smile turned up the one's mouth before it strode from the chamber, leaving the lesser of its kind to celebrate however they would. Your next filth, the guard hissed into his ear as the captive looked up, his eyes nearly white with only a ring of black to tell where the iris should have been. My God, did they make him one of them, or is he just dying? God, I hope he's only dying, Nick recalled thinking as the guards looked at his captor. Feast on his bones, it cried gleefully, then laughed when they threw the nearly dead she into the mob of shades. In seconds, another series of shouts and cheers shook the rocky fortress as bits and pieces of his body were pitched about in a frenzy of excitement. Oh yeah, forgot about that too. His blood ran cold as a realization dawned on him. That was the night they brought me meat. So, just a little bit of an idea of um, what's going on with Nick uh, in book two. Now, I haven't touched on, I'm trying to leave out some of the other heroes. I want their intros and everything to be... Um, uh, you know, kind of exciting and, you know, something that you look forward to. Anyway, so those are two of my favorite moments from book two. One is kind of toward the beginning half of the book. And the last one that I just read is very, very close to the end of it. But uh, from two, three, four, and into five, all the books just take, uh, each one begins where the last one left off. So um, the only time jump is from book one to book four. Um, so hopefully you enjoyed hearing a little bit about this. And uh, if you did, please, please go ahead and subscribe and uh, ding the notification bell. And uh, remember, I'm trying to get up to a thousand subscribers. And um, I think we're going to be doing some kind of a promotion. Uh, I have to get with my team to figure that out. But um, some kind of promotion regarding, um, I don't know, <laughs> the, uh, perhaps a, a box set of the books uh, coming up soon with the launch of book five. So we'd like to do uh, particularly potentially a box set um, of all five books. So please keep your ears uh, open for that. And uh, again, please subscribe trying to get to that magic 1000 number. 
and uh, 4,000 watch hours to get monetized. Um, that way I can get better and better at videos and, and spend more time um, making more relevant uh, vids with a lot more different topics. So anyway, thank you very, very much. Uh, keep reading, keep writing, keep creating, and together we will keep hope alive. So again, thanks a lot and catch you next time. Bye now.